Uh, our next uh, speaker, and I, I think uh, Dr. Stupak needs maybe 30 seconds to get his PowerPoint going. Dr. Ihor Stupak, who in 1995 defended his PhD thesis at uh, Zaporizhia State University. And in 2002, uh, that uh, doctorate was uh, recognized um, by the University of Toronto, which I, I think is, uh, is a very uh, important uh, accomplishment. Uh, so, um, Dr. Shupak, uh, start applying for a job uh, in Canada. We'd love to have you here. Uh, previously, Dr. Shupak had been working as a, a history teacher in Ukrainian uh, schools. He also lectured at universities for about 20 years. And in 2002-2004, he worked as editor-in-chief of Forum, Forum the bi-weekly uh, magazine published here in Toronto. Uh, since 1999, uh, he has worked as editor-in-chief of the publishing house uh, Premier in Zaporizhia, Ukraine. And since 2004, um, he has been the director of Kuma, the Ukrainian Institute for Holocaust Studies. And since 2012, he has been working as director of the Museum Jewish Memory and Holocaust in Ukraine, which is located in Dnipropetrovsk. It's a gigantic complex. You can actually see it from a, uh, a satellite vantage point on Google Maps. Uh, he's a member of the Ukrainian Polish Commission on History, a member of the Ministry of Education and Science of Ukraine, working group on upgrading educational programs and history textbooks. He's the author of more than 120 scholarly works on the history uh, of the Holocaust, the history and problems of interethnic relations in Europe. Uh, and these works have been published in Austria, Canada, Israel, Poland, Russia, Ukraine, and other countries. Uh, he is the author of a history textbook for Ukrainian schools recommended by the Ministry of Education and Science of Ukraine, and um, it is used by about half of all the school children of Ukraine today. So please welcome Dr. Ihor Shtupak. First of all, I'd like to thank to uh, Padre Galadza, to the Institute of Metropolitan and Shepitsky. Um, my institute, um, Ukrainian Institute for Holocaust uh, Studies, Kuma, has uh, close cooperation with uh, many scholarly and educational organizations, uh, with uh, Jewish and non-Jewish organizations, with Christian organ uh, organization institutions, first of all, with Ukrainian Catholic University. We organize many scholarly programs, uh, educational, and more interesting uh, is a young student uh, um, seminar, The Ark, Inter-Ethnic, Inter-Religion, uh, Ukrainian, Jewish, Polish uh, seminar in Univlavra and other very special places. And it's a big honor for me and uh, for my institute to be here in the Institute of Metropolitan Shatrytsky. Thank you very much. And my presentation, yes. National question, including the Jewish question, are not uh, the main point of the Maidan and events in Ukraine which happened after. The most important in Ukraine, it is the choice of European way of development. And this means the choice of European humanist values. A war that is current in Ukraine is not just a war of pro-Russian forces against pro-Ukrainian. Not just Russia aggression against a, an independent Ukraine, Ukrainian state. There is a post-war Soviet totalitarianism, Russian imperialism against democracy generally. Please note pro-Russian actions in Ukraine, this picture and other pictures, red flags, uh, communist symbols, portraits of Stalin and even Beria. In Crimea, after Russian occupation, uh, Putin's fans signed the old USSR anthem. No wonder that the current Russian national anthem uh, has the same melody and the same author. So, the melody of Anti-Maidan is a Soviet. And the text is anti-democratic, anti-spiritual, anti-Semitic, and anti-Ukrainian. National question always used totalitarianism 
and anti-democracy. Anti-antisemitism and Ukrainophobia have always been close. Now they are organically combined in the attack of Russian chauvinism. There is a war. This is a war against Ukrainian who have Ukrainian, Hebrew, or Russian, or other origin. This is a war against democratic Western world. This is a war against the Russian. Why against Russian? Because uh, we know from the history. Hitler, who wanted to take over the world and establish dominance of the Aryan race, led Germany to disaster. Everyone knows about the Holocaust, in which six million Jews were killed. However, Nazism and the Second World War caused the death of six million, uh, six half million Germans, split the German state and uh, saw the national humiliation after defeat at the war. The Germans got rid of chauvinism and imperialism myth in 1945 year. The evocant Russian evocant is still to come now. To understand the reaction of Jewish community to the event of the Maidan as thereafter, it is necessary to understand the context of Ukrainian-Jewish relations, the history of Jewish in Ukraine. So it's a short uh, historical retrospective. Jews living uh, on the Ukrainian territory, at least from the time of uh, the Kiev Rus. The huge part of the history of Jewish-Slavic uh, cooperation is a story of peace, uh, a mutual neighborhood. However, human memory is better in times of war and pogroms, not peace, unfortunately. And uh, you know about many stereotypes, Jewish stereotypes about Ukrainian and Ukrainian stereotypes about Jews. The negative stereotypes of Jews is Ukrainian Bandera, anti-Semites, Ukrainian writers. The negative stereotypes of Ukrainian Jews explorers, Jews Bolshevik commissars. This means uh, no exploited by Putin's propaganda. To destroy these negative stereotypes, we must understand our short spiritual values and understand the lessons of history. Even before the Maidan, it's uh, this building, building of a uh, new menorah uh, community center, biggest community center in the world, with uh, my Institute for Holocaust Studies, Kuma, and uh, uh, Jewish Museum. Um, even before the Maidan, the Dnieper Petrov Jewish community began a create museum, uh, and uh, this museum uh, was opened in 2012 during the time of uh, Bandyko, uh, sorry, Yanukovych. But uh, it's, it's correct, Bandyukovich. <laughs> uh, during the creation of this uh, museum, I did not want to avoid a uh, um, difficult question of Ukrainian Jewish history such as the uh, Khmelnytsyna, activities of the Central Rada and Simon Petlura, Ukrainian nationalism during the Second World War, and more. For example, we show how uh, Jewish uh, protected in this, uh, were uh, the Central Rada, and how Petlura tried to resist the pogroms. When we speak about Ukrainian nationalism during the war, then we pay attention to very important four points. First, Ukrainian nationalism in the late 1930s, early 1940s had pro-fascist tendencies. The same Algerian or Slovak or Croatian, other European national movements. We show that Ukrainian nationalists uh, committed crimes against Jews, Polish, the war rights, including in Lviv in 1941, beginning of pogroms, you remember, uh, at Lonsky Prize. But second point, we show that Ukrainian nationalists were bystanders, 
they are not concerned with the tragedy of the Jews who were exterminated by the Nazis. During the war, the population showed indifference. And very important third point, we show that Ukrainian nationalists was a savior of Jews, righteous among the nations. There were times when Ukrainian nationalists killed a Jewish ghettos, it was, but there were cases where Ukrainian nationalists saved Jewish ghettos. Uh, here is one example, Fedor Wolf. Uh, very famous uh, person, uh, chairman of the Nikopol district of uh, OUN, Organization of Ukrainian Nationalism, vice president of the Ukrainian Supreme Liberation Council. He is righteous among nations, officially. He is served a Jewish teacher and her family. The third point and fourth point, we show how the Jews went to the Ukrainian nationalists the own and UPA ranks. All this is true. In the museum, we create the expositions uh, where we are telling about Ukrainian and Russian collaboration during the war. Uh, and very important exhibition devoted to Ukrainian righteous among the nation. I am proud uh, that um, in Jewish Museum was found the uh, first museum exhibition devoted to the great Ukrainian Metropolitan Andrei Sheptysky. We have books from uh, the Sheptysky Library and even which his autograph. Uh, we have reproduced Sheptysky cabinet, look. Uh, but the most important it is that we show his idea of love all people. Here we talk about uh, spiritual and devils, uh, Glagolev, Orthodox priest, and Omelian Kovch, uh, Greek uh, Catholic uh, priest, and other heroes of the spirit. Why do I give an example of this museum? Because it is our Jewish museum and Kuma Institute has become a free democratic platform for Ukrainian Jewish dialogue in the time of the Yanukovych regime. We, uh, unlike most of the public universities, can take Ukrainian historians, patriots, and host the lectures on Ukrainian nationalism and the Jewish question about the fate of democracy and Ukraine. Professor Hritsak, Patrilak, Rinevich, Repan uh, Vyatrovich, Professor Magochi uh, here, Rifat Shubarov from Crimea, we have our partner, uh, the Institute of Social Research, uh, to hold the conference on the history of the OUN and more. Why do we did all this? Here I want to emphasize an important point. Contemporary Ukraine formed a new spiritually and is particularly active because of the Maidan. Contemporary Ukraine formed the civil society and is particularly active because of the Maidan. Contemporary Ukraine formed Ukrainian political nation and uh, it uh, is particularly active because of the Maidan. The parts of this nation are Ukrainian and Russian, Jewish, Tatar, Polish, Germans, all of whom are citizens and patriots. In modern Ukraine, format Ukrainian Jewry. Ukrainian Jewry. In this sense, for example, I am personally, I am Ukrainian <coughs> of uh, Jewish descent. A few years ago, the um, brightest representatives of Ukrainian Jews were few. Among them, you see Yosef Zizel, Selenit Finberg, Vitaly Lachmanovich, Mikhail Gold, and others. Finally, pro-Ukrainian, patriotic position took the high spiritual authorities, Rabbi Yaakov Bleich, Shmuel Kamenetsky, Rabbi of Dnepropetrovsk region, and others. Now we have much greater quantity of Ukrainian Jews. And this Ukrainian Jews uh, influences the formation of the positive spiritual atmosphere that defines the active and constructive role of Jewish in Maidan and the democratic movement in Ukraine. Next, Yevra and Jews. 
Maidan in Ukraine is a revolution of dignity, struggle for the humanistic values uh, that uh, are the values of the modern Western world uh, in human rights and freedoms. From this, it follows that the Ukrainian Jewish community should have fully supported Maidan. However, they had not. Why? First, Jews are very seldom unanimous. It is well known since uh, ancient history. It members of Jewish Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin uh, voted uh, unanimously. The decision was not taken. It was considered to be wrong. In this regard, Jews are very similar to Ukrainians. To illustrate this, I propose to combine these uh, two uh, proverbs. For every two Ukrainians, there are three hetmans. For every two Jews, uh, are three synagogues. I apologize, uh, we are not talking about churches, yeah? <laughs> For thousands of uh, years, uh, Jews is second point. Uh, for thousands of uh, years, the Jews follow uh, the principle of the loyalty to authority. But only until this authority starts to threaten the very existence of people. The biblical principle, all authority comes from God, is supplemented by the thesis, God should be protected from godless authority. So, uh, third point, Jews as well as Ukrainians, Russians and others have different political, economic and uh, even religious views. Speaking of policy and national civic identification, I think that before my time, a large portion of Jews in Ukraine, perhaps even the majority were pro-Russian. First of all, it applies to the Jews of Crimea and Donetsk, Donbass, uh, as well as Kharkiv, uh, Priazovia, uh, Odessa, and strange uh, as it may seem, Dnipropetrovsk in the past. Um, for the absolute majority of Jews in eastern and south Ukraine, the following was typical. The main language, Russian. Poor knowledge of Ukrainian. Understanding of history as the basis of Soviet and post-Soviet Soviet myths. Poor knowledge of Ukrainian history. Cautions uh, and uh, fears concerning Ukrainian nationalism, Banderivtsi, uh, and etc. However, such pro Russians of the Jews didn't mean pro Sovietness. That, <coughs> that is why all the values remind the priority to all the Jews. In Soviet times, Jews made up a large percentage of dissidents. Ukrainians and Jews formed the majority of Soviet camps' price lives. Oh, uh, I'll name a few of these values you see. The absolute value of human life, aspiration for freedom and equality of rights, strong sense of justice, understanding of the priority of spiritual power of a gross physical violence, Desire for knowledge and culture development, fair competition in business, and etc. Let's remember how many Jews were among six people in Moscow in 1968 who protested against Soviet aggression in Czechoslovakia. No wonder that nowadays there are so many Jews among Russians who protect, protest against Russian aggression in Ukraine now. Obviously, these values are not merely Jewish. They are shared by a large part of Ukrainian society, Ukrainian civil society. Instead, Yanukovych regime denied and rejected this fact. This is why our Maidan appeared. I don't want to speak too much uh, about the reasons of Maidan. It was here on other lectures, yeah? Uh, but it's important to see the dynamic of the process. Ukrainian society created Maidan, and Maidan started to change Ukrainian society. Jewish community of Ukraine has also changed, especially in Dnepropetrovsk, and not only. 
active modern part of Jewish uh, community, intellectuals, businessmen, public figures, so that democratic Maidan met their democratic aspirations. The Jewish took part in Kiev Maidan. Social composition of Jewish participants of Maidan was slightly different from social composition of Kiev Maidanivtsi, Maidan members, uh, participants. They were students and engineers, businessmen and pedagogues, pensioners and IT specialists. Together with Ukrainians, Russians, uh, they built barricades, protected Maidan and provided in with everything necessary. Jewish people are proud of that the war uh, not two, three of them among the heroes of the Celestian Squadron, uh, Heroi Nebesnoi Sotni, who gave their lives for the freedom. However, in regions, especially in eastern, in south, uh, southern Ukraine, many Jews waited and didn't take any particular position. Part of them was simply afraid of repressions by Yanukovych. Part of them, mainly in Crimea, Donetsk, Luhansk, Mariupol, were, uh, were uh, influenced uh, by anti-Ukrainian propaganda and believed in the myth about Maidan is ruled by Banderevci and anti semites Also Jews wondered uh, whether Maidan was of anti-Semitic character. It's an important point. Numerous publications of Jewish leaders rhymed this myth. Famous Jews got up on Maidan rostrums, expressed their opinion in newspaper and TV, uh, give public lectures and numerous interviews. The world, world, as it usual for Jews, played special role for them, and not only for them. Everyone uh, knew that among hundreds of thousands of people there were anti-Semites, members of Svoboda political party and radical Yost gangs. This fact is not denied, but anti-Semites participated in Maidan, but there was no anti-Semitism as social phenomenon. Josef Zizis, famous public figure, former dissident, uh, has not in the article Ukraine on both sides of the barricades. Um, I represented the Jewish community on the stage of Kiev Maidan. The rabbi took part in interconfessional prayer service of peace, you remember. At the Open University on Maidan, people listened to lecture on Jewish culture and studies with great interest. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and uh, bondly welcomed Klezmer's performance. We published Dutch of positive impressions of Jews because there was no anti-Semitism on Mandai. In brief, one of the Svoboda political party leaders, Mikhail Lishin, you know, was not allowed by the students to speak at a local Lviv Maidan because uh, he is extremist and anti-Semite. And, uh, and uh, famous, uh, just a second, yeah, this one. Uh, famous dissident uh, Nathan Hazen estimated his participation uh, in self-defense by saying, I believe that the presence of Jews in Maidan is not just a uh, concentration of the uh, creator's uh, name. It is a dialogue of the Jews with the future government. This is what will um, enable the Jews to live and work on this country tomorrow. A great action was caused by the interview with Jewish participant of Maidan, who, who, who became Maidan's Sotnik, uh, is bright and eloquent. It was worth living in this country to be able to see Maidan. Jewish Sotnik denied the existence of anti-Semitism from the side of Ukrainian participants in Maidan. Uh, when, um, when the repressions of Yanukovych regime had intensified, the Jewish communities have made a force to release the arrested activists and innocent victims of bandit authority. 
due uh, to uh, lack of time, I cannot tell, for example, about our participation in the campaign for the release from detention uh, of the famous computer design Anton Stogov. He is partner of Tkuma Institute, a very famous artist. Uh, in that crazy situation, the position uh, of the social activists and religion leaders was of great significance. Uh, we have already mentioned uh, the Ukrainian Jews. Uh, who represent uh, the Ukrainian jury, Zizels, Portnikov, Nachmanovich, Gold, and others. Josef Zizels, uh, you see, has organized the famous appeal to Putin on behalf of the Jewish community in Ukraine. This document, in March 2014, was uh, signed only by about 40 people. I am proud that my signature is on there as well. Of course, this letter received a negative reaction from that part of the society as well. However, it is significant that his appeal contains the main ideas of Maidan, promoted them and expanded the prospects for democratic development of Ukrainian multi-ethnic society. This appeal was the original declaration of democratically minded Jewish community in Ukraine. And now, my Kamenetsky. The speech in the synagogue Golden Rose uh, in Dnepropetrovsk of the chief rabbi of Dnepropetrovsk and Dnepropetrovsk region Shmuel Kamenetsky has received wide publicity. He appealed to the Jewish congregation and point on the Maidan was of the democratic character and that the huge threat is uh, posed to Jews as well as uh, a resident of Ukraine by aggressive Russian leader Vladimir Putin. It is interesting that uh, Kamenetsky said, obviously not all the Jews agree with me, especially Jewish veterans, veterans of the war. Uh, but uh, the Jews should know that Putin today is our main enemy and main enemy of all Ukraine. Rabbi rejected the threat of pogroms and said that Jews should not be afraid of about Nazis from the right sector or Maidan squadrons. He said that Jews and Ukrainians share common values, interests, and should unite. Of course, the word uh, on uh, uh, very most influenced and respected spiritual leader of Ukraine was of great importance uh, for not only the Jewish community but for Dnepropetrovsk city for other regions of Ukraine. Thus, the majority of the Jewish community in Ukraine uh, consciously supported Maidan and um, overthrow of the Yanukovych regime. However, as you know, Putin's regime has begun his military, political, and economic war against Ukraine, an important part of this war, a propaganda war, uh, a war uh, for the minds of, Ukrainian, of, uh, of Ukrainians, of Ukrainian, Russian, Jewish, and other origin. And <coughs> situation in the east of Ukraine, Jews, during the auto and Russian aggression. Uh, I'd like to talk separately about Jews of Donbass, of Eastern Ukraine, and Dnepropetrovsk, other pro-Maidan regions. It is worthy to mention that Jews of Donetsk and Luhansk, and before the, this autumn, Mariupol, took the same social position as the majority of the population of this region. One article in uh, Eastern Ukraine says, they think in the same way as Jews in Russia. Banderists and fascists are now in Kyiv. Last time I was in the east of Ukraine in spring 2014. I have regular lecture and educational seminars for teachers of history, for universities, and etc. I conducted sessions, uh, read lectures uh, about the Second World War, Holocaust, uh, as in other regions of Ukraine and is in other groups of population. Here, among Jewish war people with modern, progressive means, Ukrainian patriots. Here, uh, there are both pro-Russian elements and 
unfortunately, marginalized. And uh, I can show you uh, my different picture uh, in Lugansk, in Donetsk. It's April, May of 2014. School people's students, Ukrainian patriots. I say, Slava Ukraini, Sivit Pavidait, Heroem Slava. In Lugansk, in Donetsk. Uh, what happened? Uh -huh. It's university students, uh, educators, uh, Ukrainian patriots, the same. But this one, very interesting uh, picture uh, in uh, Lugansk, different museums. Uh, museum, uh, the picture on the right, it's a uh, museum of fabric uh, with a uh, description uh, of the history of this fabric from 19th century to present. With different Tsar, with different uh, heads, Lenin, Stalin, uh, Brezhnev, and etc. But you see, main place, it's portrait of Stalin. I ask, why Stalin up all history here? She asked me, sorry, do you know about the role of Stalin in the history? I know. <laughs> Uh, but the sentiments uh, of the members of Jewish communities in the territory controlled by the terrorists change now. The reasons uh, are the following. First, the dominance of banditry. Uh, second, the uh, absence of normal um, I mean, uh, conditions and lack, uh, um, lack of job. Third, the manifestations of anti-Semitism by the DNR LNR as a reaction to the pro-Ukrainian position of Jews of Dnepropetrov and other cities uh, and as manifestation of great Russian chauvinism. Here are the examples of anti-Semitism. Uh, I have article in internet uh, with uh, typical text. Jewish oligarchs as secret architect of Ukrainian uprising. Economic reason of Euromaidan is banal. Predominantly Jewish oligarchs who have already wasted Soviet legacy decide to make a right to capture uh, remnants of national wealth and Ukraine, and etc., etc., etc. Other side. Zido Bandera, yeah? um, It's not joke only. Um, patriotic and pro-Ukrainian sentiments of Dnepropetrov Jews raise great interest. This unique and bright phenomenon received controversial title this Zido uh, Bandera. In the logo, you can see uh, to the right, in the logo of, uh, it's unofficial logo, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, more typical. Uh, logo of Judah Banderas, uh, we see a stylized Jewish candle holder, menorah. Menorah is an uh, instrument symbol of the Jewish people, the base of the emblem, official, official emblem of Israel. Now this name is given uh, to the, our Dnepropetrovsk Jewish Community Center in, uh, in Dnepropetrovsk, uh, and we see that the symbol of menorah has something in common with Ukrainian national trident. You see? The phenomenon uh, of the explosion of Ukrainian patriotism among Jewish community of Dnepropetrovsk and population of the city is general, has its reasons. First, uh, Dnepropetrovsk is a city with great scientific and intellectual potential and intensive industries. Engineers, professional students, uh, nature have modern, progressive and pro-European orientation. Second, business and political elite of Dnipro has always been a leading position in Soviet Union in the past and in the Ukraine. During Brezhnev from Dnipro, you know, uh, Kuchma, Lazarenko, Timoshenko, Etc. Instead, during the power of Yanukovych, Dnepropetrovsk elite, including Jewish part, suffered from the attack of Donetsk oligarchs. Next, the symbol of Dnepropetrovsk is a bridge. Bridge between East and West. 
However, spiritually, people of the Dnipro, Dnipro it's a short title of Dnipropetrovsk, uh, people of Dnipro and its Jewish community have always been closer to European values than to Asia and Russia. Nomination of Igor Kolomoisky is the head of regional state administrative became the logical step. Igor Kolomoisky as well is his partner in private group, Gennady Bogolubov and leaders of the Dnieper Jewish community, due to the efforts the menorah enter and uh, our museum was built. Igor Kolomoisky and his team, Gennady Korban, and a Russian Boris Pilatov, not only Jewish in the team of Kolomoisky. Uh, Hazane Aze played a great role in protection of Dnepropetrovsk and Ukraine from attack from the east. Military and political experts say due, due to Kolomoisky Russian tanks are uh, on the other bank of Dnieper. However, uh, his efforts were useless without the support of majority of society, a huge number of Ukrainian patriots and volunteers. I see they do not have time, and I will do circumcise this lecture, <laughs> <laughs> but by Jewish tradition, yeah? uh, And, okay, and to conclusions. Uh, the vast majority of the Jewish community in Ukraine is patriots and protect their country from enemies. Again, the idea that I said at the beginning of the lecture, anti-Semitism and Ukrainophobia always been close. Now they organically united in the attack of Russian chauvinism. As a result, national democrats, Ukrainian, Jewish, Belarusian, Russian, Polish, have no choice but to unite. Thank you.